How's everybody doing tonight? Okay. Somebody say hello in the chat room. Hi. So how are y'all doing tonight? I'm Kelly Ritchie and I'm really glad to be here. Uh, I just want to make sure everybody can hear my guitar and a rhythm track that I will be playing too. So, tonight I'm going to talk about some uh, of the techniques that I use when I play lead. And there's a brand new uh, article that just came out in the Rift Journal. And I did a guitar lesson in there. And it's from my Blues Grit series. I have two series on True Fire. One is Blues Grit. And there's 10 songs in that. And then the other one is Focus on Power Trio, which is exactly what it says focusing on a blues rock power trio where riffs and power chords and then how they come together with riff driven songs and playing lead and uh, all the principles of what it takes to play in a three-piece band which is the Kelly Ritchie band that I've toured with for a really long time I've always had a three-piece band so um, at least 97 percent of the time so those are the two series that I have. Both of those series go into some tips and tricks, uh, different techniques and concepts. So um, in the Blues Grit and in this article, I pulled out three of the main ones, hammer-ons and pull-offs, bends and slides, and I've coupled these together, and uh, rakes and vibrato. Okay, so actually hammer-ons, pull-offs, vibrato and bends, rakes and slides. So I'd like to look at um, the rakes. Let me see. I'll be in the key of E. Let me hit this lead and take the delay off here for a second. As much as I love delay, I will turn that back on here in just a minute. Okay, so um, Jeff, if you are watching this, I'm not getting anything in the chat group. So if there are things being chatted, I'm not getting anything. So if you have any advice, or if it doesn't matter, that's cool. And Jeff is the man behind the scenes at True Fire. So um, let's look at a rake and a slide. So... Now I'm in the key of E, minor pentatonic. And there's my root. Now, most people break the pentatonics down into five different fingerings. I use two fingerings, and then I expand them. So, um, I'll just run through. I've got a root six. That's my open E string. And I've got the same thing up on my 12th fret. So those are my, uh, that's my one pattern. Both of them are just repeated root six. And then I have another one that I, that I do that's root five. Now, if I expand these, then I'm covering the entire neck of the guitar. And I can use my first and third fingers only. So I'm going to get a lot of um, speed out of that. Um, I find that using uh, all of the five different fingerings, it can be awkward, ex especially for beginners, and you're not going to get as much speed out of it. That's not to say that you need to be playing fast, but you want to be able to, okay? So if I expand this one, 
I'll move these two notes down here. Instead of playing that note, I'll play it up here. Okay, so I'm going to be playing right there, and then I'm going to show some examples up here on my root six. If I move that note there, move these two notes up here. So just uh, to make sure that everybody knows what I'm referring to, okay? Now, that's what I'm going to play over. It's a song that I wrote called Rising Sun, and it's an E minor, but I'm mainly just playing the root and five. Now, See, it says I need to open up YouTube chat and then mute it. Let me see where is YouTube chat. Jeff, I see a chat on the side and I post it in there. Excuse us while we get this sorted out. Open up a new page. Go to True Fire and your live page. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. You can't test these until you. Okay, so True Fire. Live chat. All right. Now we got it. All right on. Okay. There are people out there. Sweet. Um, pop up chat. There we go. All right. Now I don't feel so alone. Okay. Let me see what some people have been saying. Can close that. Make myself a little smaller. All right. What would be a good way to get a two piece band going? Um, uh, both guitar. Okay, I'll talk about that. Um, can I see comments? Okay. Well, uh, I've done quite a bit of two-piece work, but it's been more like the black keys and um, white stripes. I love Jack White, and I love the black keys. So uh, quite often I will play with just a drummer, and um, I came off the road this last year except for festivals, and I'm transitioning into a lot of solo loop-based material. I have a drummer for us to do uh, the power duo, and then I still have a power trio for festivals and things. So, uh, so I can talk about all of those aspects of things. Now, getting back to what it was that I was playing here, I want to give you um, some real subtle things that make a huge difference. Um, a lot of times I find when I'm working with students, teachers obviously are here to teach you how to play the guitar. I really focus, let's see, you will see the link. I go too far. Okay, Jeff, I have it. Okay, cool. Um, obviously, teachers are going to teach you how to play the guitar. That's what we're here for. Okay, but I really focus on building a connection with the guitar. It's like how it is that you're playing each note because the each note starts in your fingertips, okay? And, you know, a lot of times we get really, really hung up on our guitar rig sound, which I am a gearhead. I mean, make no mistake about it. I mean, I hoard uh, guitar gear. I've got it in all my closets. My house, I'm very OCD, so my house is nice and uncluttered, but my closets, they've got some guitar gear going on. But the your guitar rig all it's good for is to amplify what starts in your fingertips 
okay? And so what you've got going on in your fingertips and what you bring into, I'm just going to be focusing on the pentatonics tonight, the minor pentatonics, what you bring into each note is important. It's not about even the whole phrase. The phrase is made up of, of individual notes. So if I'm going to... That's my target note right there. But I did a rake. I like to make an entrance into, uh, especially into a lead, but even into just different segments of a lead. If I'm going to do something, I'm not going to just... So here I'm doing a rake. And a rake, it, it's a combination of things. One, it's not that because if I keep my strings on the neck, they're going to keep ringing. So I can just take my strings off of the neck, but leave my fingers on the strings. Because if I did that, that'd be a mess. But I want to also mute here so it's totally choked out, totally clean. So, see how I've got the pad? And watch how I'm literally pivoting right here because a lot of, you know, when you very first started playing the guitar, you know how, like, I give people finger exercises. And when you're first starting, you push down each note as hard as you can. And then all of a sudden you realize, wait a minute, I don't have to push down that hard. Because once you kind of get it dialed in, and yes, your fingers get stronger, and yes, you'll eventually, you know, start really building up some calluses, but you start leveraging the fret. And you start letting the frets do the work and it's like a tenth of the energy that goes into it okay so the same thing when you're playing I don't want to like be working that note trying to give it vibrato almost like if there was something on the fret and I was trying to scratch it off with the string and I use my middle finger on my right hand because if I use my pick it's okay but so you'd want to really practice this in segments and I don't when, when people sit not necessarily just on the front row smack these strings and you can hear I can hear my the pick over top of my loud amplifiers I mean I really smack these things you don't have to do that but to get just this real clean real punchy real entrance a lot of energy gets people's attention like whoa I do my rake where I bring my strings off the neck and I mute and a, a really critical thing that I'm finding more and more and I've taught for a long time and I'm always learning something as a teacher but I'll have people like play a song like hey Joe is a good example really soft And then at regular volume and a nuance between the two because you really get control built up so like watch how I feather now my hands not parallel that makes for a really harsh strum but if you just like uh, I don't know how many people rode bicycles and used clothespins and put playing cards in the spokes so it sounded like a motorcycle. 
but uh, when I was a kid we did. Uh, so it's kind of like that. So just letting the pick fall from string to string. And you only want to hold on to the pick as hard as you need to. If I'm, well, I clamp down on it for that. But then, I find that new students, they want to pick everything instead of this. Okay, so, I'm really pressing down. I'm not, because if I... Okay, so enough on that lick. I'm sure we're all tired of that now. Now I can do it up here in my root six minor pentatonic. And I don't, I don't always catch the note that I'm using here with my third finger, but I might. And uh, I definitely don't want it to ring open. So. This requires just a little bit more dialing it in because, uh, one, here, it's just easier to grab hold of. Again, my middle finger. So, slides, you know, it's easy to think that that's a slide, which it is, but, I'm sorry. And you can do a backwards rig. And here I'm not playing the, the, the strings. I'm just letting my pick roll across them, just feather them. My middle finger. That wasn't in the guitar lesson on uh, Riff Journal, but that's in the classroom, one of the, uh, the techniques that I use. So I use my middle finger all the time. That and sweet notes. So all of these things help bring an individual note to life. Uh, because, I mean, face it, this is blues. There's five notes for the most part. It's a three-chord song. Uh, and if you're playing slow blues, people will go to sleep after a few verses. You've got to wake them up. And the best thing about the blues, like my, my happy place, is my favorite coffee mug. Um, to keep people from going to sleep, it's all about dynamics. And it's about building that tension and then, boom, dropping the bottom out, making an entrance. Okay, so if I'm gonna, uh, let me put on this uh, track and play just a little bit and then give some examples. too much stuff so I was focusing on I slide into it and I take some things for granted I've had you know students say you have to learn how to slide because uh, you want it to be fluid you don't want so there's just the right amount of pressure and where do I start somewhere up here and I don't necessarily, I just kind of like sliding in the home plate. Not that I've ever really slid in the home plate, but I've seen it on TV. 
So I slide down with my middle finger, slide up with my ring finger. And my hand is muting everything. So you'll literally want to practice just sliding up and down. Get the chat right here. Awesome, I love my strat. Thank you. Look at the back of it. When I got this guitar, no scratches on it. A guy that had owned it was a Gibson man, and this had been, it's a 65 with a 63 uh, body, 65 neck, or vice versa. A 65 necks, if yeah, 63 body. Anyway, uh, so I've gotten, I've had the luxury of putting uh, all of the scratches, including my one bright idea when I had Taylor on a 63 strap. So, practice your slides, your entrances, your transitions. Those are really good things uh, to use. And do I overuse them? Absolutely. <laughs> and I do so with the meaning, it's the glue that puts things together. Now, I don't slide for just slide sake I slide to like I'll back up and come back into a note. together so it just you know it's fluid uh kind of like ballet which i've never done ballet either but i've seen that on tv um you you just want it to be graceful and you want to stay in 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 contact with the body and glue it all together you don't want to lose touch with your guitar <laughs> Now, bends can be tricky. Uh, again, if I'm going to do like a bend. I like to, again, make that dramatic entrance. Guitars all about melodrama. Now, I've got to cover myself. And I use these two fingers to bend you have to um even guys use two fingers to bend uh, and, and and i will i'll see you know the majority of my students are guys uh although i've had you know some really great female guitar players um what is that we don't need any sales pitch I'm not sure what that was. Maybe I shouldn't have. It said I deleted a message by Truefire. Whoops. Oh well, whatever it was. So um, you want to make that entrance. So I uh, lost my train of thought. Mm. Oh, bends. See if you just go. Okay, there I got it. You got it like <laughs> that was Jeff. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> See how I'm looking for it. And once I get up there, I've got that little wiggle room, which gives it some life. And it makes me just sound spot on because I'm not just, you know, coming up cold, trying to hit the, the bullseye with the dart. Uh, and then once you get going, da, 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 you're doing things so fast, the imperfections, they don't show. So. And then dialing in sweet notes. Uh, my favorite guitar player on the planet is Roy Buchanan. God rest his soul. Uh, he is a master of sweet notes. Um, if you've never heard Roy Buchanan, go on uh, YouTube and, and type in Roy Buchanan, Hey Joe. 
and it's the Austin City Limits version in like two, uh, 1977, I think. Uh, and then just sit down and listen. I mean, it's one of the most fabulous things in the world. You'll hear him use sweet notes and dynamics. Um, it, uh, just, just trust me on that. So... tend to be a mystery to people when they're first learning them and all I can say is that if you really try to do them right when you're ready to give up that's when you'll accidentally hit one and it'll be like ah so you literally they're pinch harmonics because you literally pinch the pick because you need to again it's just like if there was something on a wall and you're trying to get it off you know it's how you would you know well, you can't really see what I'm doing uh, but you know, just really like trying to dig something in you, and you want to just kind of pick through the, the string. See how I barely got any pick there? Phrasing, I'll get to that, absolutely. So. things bends and again practice getting up in pitch and then giving it just that little wiggle room your vibrato add punctuation with any kind of a pinch harmonic and your middle finger So those are kind of in a nutshell what I wanted to make sure that and hammer-ons. Now hammer-ons and pull-offs they don't have to be that just I'll do uh, a pull off as an anticipated note where it's just uh. okay so let me look through here somebody wanted some phrasing uh, da, 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 da. thank you for liking my guitar any tips on vibrato and bends, Jerry Wilson? I uh, just covered that. If you have any more questions, let me know. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, the two-piece band thing. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Keep any ideas coming. Now, phrasing. I'm, I'm not... A traditional blues player at all make no bones about it I started off I was influenced by uh, Zeppelin and Hendrix and uh, Stevie Ray and, and actually Hendrix was the first thing I'd ever heard that sounded like that I was not raised on I was uh, raised in a Southern Baptist family and the the coolest thing we had was Tom Jones which I like Tom Jones it really beat the out of Engelbert Humperdinck. Nothing against Engelbert Humperdinck, but I didn't have a lot to pick from. So when I heard, when I got a guitar and I heard Jimi Hendrix, it was over. It was a game changer. I mean, like, seriously, think about that. It, I didn't know things like that existed. Uh, and then Zeppelin. And I didn't, blues, I didn't, rock is what, you know, we called it. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. But I'd grown up in a and a Baptist church that was the first church to integrate, and so and it was burned to the ground in the late 60s, and so the African-American community teamed with our church, and that was the first time I'd heard the difference between black gospel and white gospel. And the black gospel music really had a strong impact on me. 
And then uh, in the probably around 86, 87, I had the opportunity to, to play with Albert King. That's when I went to school and learned more in one night than uh, it's like one of those major aha moments. That's when I began to realize, oh, Led Zeppelin didn't write all these songs, all the, you know, the early blues stuff. And so, but I didn't know, you know, and a lot of people, they're drawn to music and they don't really know its history. So blues based rock in a power trio. And, and I, quite frankly, I ended up with a power trio because uh, the guys wouldn't let me play with them. There weren't the, the you know, there's, ton of female guitar players out there now there weren't when i started playing so i ended up you know finding a bass player and drummer and saying you know whatever i'll just do it myself and it and you know stevie ray zeppelin hendrix that was a three-piece band you know sound that i'd been accustomed to and so when it comes to phrasing a lot of it is technique more so than it is note selection like a couple of uh licks that people come up and ask me about um, I'm playing live. Uh, hey Joe has become a signature song. I've played it. It was the first, one of the first songs I've learned. It was definitely the first Hendrix tune. And that's when somebody threw me on to Hendrix because I didn't know where the song came from. But, uh, So what I was doing here, playing, basically I'm playing just those, one, two, three, those notes with this pinky anchored on my second finger. Now, if I played that slow, the amount of, of noise would be bad. But when you, when you dive in, a lot of times people are afraid to make a mess. And you've kind of got to dive in and make a mess. And it's the learning to, to clean up the mess that is what's where I find the key to be. Just, you know, that's why when you practice... Practice like you're crazy. <laughs> I mean, like, seriously, dream like you're crazy, practice like you're crazy, and then work. So, now, watch my right hand. I'm, and I want to address this because everything I do is based on, I look at a guitar like a drum set, okay? Uh, I'm very dyslexic. I uh, grew up playing piano, but by ear, I had to take piano lessons, and it was painful because I can't see the dots. I just, I just can't. So, yes, I understand theory. Yes, I know theory, but I'm not using theory when I play the guitar. Very little of it. You know, of course, when you've played a really long time, you take for granted what it is that you know because you've just done it for so long. But I approach my guitar as a rhythm instrument. Uh, I got a drum set uh, when I was in my early teens. My next door neighbor gave it to me because I was banging on the drums at his house. He's like, why don't you take those home and bang on them there? And after about six months of that, my dad said he'd buy me anything I wanted. So uh, not that I was wealthy, that I was going to get a Strat like this. But uh, I got a Sears guitar and a little three-watt amp, and it was not a good guitar at all. I went through three of them in three months, which having kind of a cheap guitar to start on, if you can can make music out of a cheap guitar, then when you get a guitar like this, you're gonna one you're gonna appreciate it. That's for sure. So I love rhythm, and my left hand is only so fast. Uh, I only have so much dexterity. Some people just blah, blah, blah. maybe it was because I started off with pentatonics and just ran with it and loved that you know heavy blues bass rock sound i don't know but uh that was kind of where my road map kind of that's what kind of got in my dna and my right hand is fierce i mean i was all over stevie ray watching him play in his right hand because again i had a kaler on this thing and uh so getting my little locking that thing out and 
you know, tuning down a half step is a pain. So I kind of listened to him, picked up some of his licks, and really, really, really picked up his right hand. And uh, that's the first time I ever learned that, you know, just sitting and playing by myself. It's a lot, and, and, you've, and you've got to move when you're playing. You've got to feel it, okay? So... Uh, I want to introduce these these riffs, these phrases, and how I put these things, and what it is that I have to offer uh, when it comes to uh, phrases, the way that I look at it. I, I, I'm not going to sit here and teach you a bunch of stuff that I don't know. There's guys out there that are great with all the little blues, riffs, and everything. Mine are a little bit more... Well, I think you see it, and we'll be getting more into that. But I'll have students start by just two... Or you've got to find that pulse and my my heels are coming off the they're bouncing don't don't one two three four one two and I'm muting with my left hand one two three four one two and three and four and one two three four one now we're gonna go to sixteenths one and two and three and see how I never lose that pulse Take that, once you really get control of it, watch my right hand never stops. I'll, I'll wear just a little riff like that out because I'll play it rhythmically. So it's a combination of keeping the right hand going but you have to be able to mute with your left hand or you've got a mess. Because the... Sounds awful. So it's a combination of this muting and my fingers muting. My middle finger just kind of lays over the neck of the guitar, just lays on the strings. And then when I bend, again, I use these two fingers. Somebody's talking about mixing the minor and major pentatonic. Yes. So let's cleanse our palettes from uh, uh, Hey Joe and uh, Rising Sun. Both of those are minor pentatonic songs. So if I'm like... Just doing something like that. 12 bar blues. My minor pentatonic. If I want to weave in a major pentatonic, first off, let's make sure that we know what that is. This is my minor pentatonic, and if I scoot that down, that's still the the root, but I have a pattern that looks the same, but that falls a different place on the neck of the guitar. Same looking pattern. And there's its root. Don't get hung up on the fact that 
scales don't have to start on the root. It's where the root is in relationship to all these notes because the notes are repeated all over the neck of the guitar. Wherever we jump in is where we jump in. So and when I expand this, move that down here, move these two notes up here. So there's my E major pentatonic. And that, this extension up here, uh, it's shaped like a pentagon or a home plate. This lays right over top of my minor pentatonic. So here's my major, 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 minor, minor, major, minor, 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 major. 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 Minor. Major. Minor. Okay. So that's, uh, get that kind of phrasing. And that's a great place to start. A really good song to learn how to play that'll kind of teach you almost everything you need to know about that weave is uh, Hideaway. Freddie King, uh, my second favorite guitar player. Well, that's where it gets to be in some real stiff competition with Hendrix and Page. And... So, um, let's see, let me look. Uh, what did I learn from Albert King? Um, well, when I went backstage to meet him, I was playing at this, uh, I was bartending at this place called the Cuckoo's Nest in, um, uh, Nashville. I was in, I'd been on tour with the band on Arista Records, and then I came off the road, uh, in between bands and projects, and I was bartending, which is what people do in Nashville, and, uh, Albert was playing that night. He had two shows, and, um, of course, I asked him if I could sit in. And he said, if I brought my guitar, and of course, I brought my guitar and my amp. And so since I worked there, I could get back and uh, talk with him. And when I went in, he had a sheriff's badge and a pistol. So that's one thing I learned. You walk into that room with some respect. And he just, you know, he talked a lot about blues. He talked about Stevie Ray, how he made him sing. And uh, just, just, you know, it was just interesting. You know, he said, pull that. What do you got in that case? And when I pulled this out... Whew, I was safe because it's like, oh, she's got an old strat. And it was a little beat up then, nothing like it is now. But um, when I got on one, he sent me, they came back to get him. And he said, you go on out there without me. I'm like, yay, you know, okay. Uh, I was just, you know, stupid enough <laughs> to, to be really excited about that. Uh, and then he stood up as I was on my way out the door and he looked down at me. I mean, he's a 6'6". Six, six. I think, and he goes, don't you make me ashamed. At that moment, as a guitar player, because, you know, it takes a certain amount of, of ego and self-confidence to get on stage and play. Now, there's that kind of ego that's just not cool. But, you know, it, it takes that. And when he looked down at me like that, I didn't have any ego. It was zero. It was wiped out. <laughs> you know, I was like, yes, sir. And my knees shook, and I sweated all the way up to the stage, and uh, we, we kicked it off. And then he gave me a lead in every single song, and uh, he let me play. And every now and then, he, he'd yell at me, uh, I said a ninth chord! And I'm thinking, man, I know I'm play, playing a ninth chord. Like, yes, sir! Yes, sir! Uh, and his guitar was upside down, and it was not restrung. So the bass strings were on the bottom. So I didn't learn a whole lot from looking at him. I learned a whole lot from feeling the energy he put off on that stage. That's what I want to convey to people. 
what you put into one note, your leads made up of all of those one note offerings that you've got. And you're as good as your last show. You're as good as your last jam session. There's, you know, that's kind of a harsh thing to say, but there's, it's a, it's a principle to kind of have as a measuring stick. Okay. Um, oh man. I don't know where my notifications are, but, uh, the, that was loud. And, and if my phone rings, uh, it sounds like angels are coming back with, uh, <laughs> on Harleys or something. Uh, so, you know, I really learned from him passion and I got, you know, a PhD that night in what blues looks like and what it feels like. And I'd always said, you know, blues are simple. I don't need to learn how to play that. I really play this. I didn't a clue. <laughs> that was the night where I really started learning everything on, on the next level. And, uh, I remember Warren Haynes was in the, the audience who's, uh, government mule, um, who's with the Almond Brothers, and I knew Warren well when I lived down there. Actually, it was his uh, backup band that um, that backed up uh, Albert King that night, and so I knew those guys. But you know, I, I, I it was a humbling experience, and I and I learned that I needed to go back. I asked Warren. I said, "Who do I need to listen to?" Because I didn't know. And so you've got to turn to other people and ask for advice. Take lessons from everybody that you can. And usually you'll find that one teacher that really speaks to you and that connects with you, that's going to help you learn how to play. Now, they may not learn how to teach you how to do everything, but they're going to be that kind of go-to person to where it's like, what am I doing? I'm lost. I need inspiration. You know, wh what's going on here? So there's that. Um, let's see. So bending and vibrato is someone's Achilles heel. Yeah, you know, when, I, when, when students send me a lesson, you know, and I ask new students, it's like, look, you know, play like three verses of Hey Joe, really quiet, you know, and then a regular volume, do it with open chords, and then do it with bar chords, quiet, and then, you know, regular volume, and then just play a lead over it. Um, people try to like, okay, I'll put a bend in. Okay, now I'll hammer on, or, oh, I'll slide. And you got to step back and think, hold on a minute. There's certain places that you bend for one thing. Like if I'm in the key of E, um, I've got a whole step from here to here as far as the next note in the scale. But from here to here, I've got a step and a half. So in this root five, you would only bend these two notes for one thing. I'll see a lot of people try to bend this. Now I can get up there and do that for like effect if I'm like ah, just, you know, killing it and like, ah, I've gone as far as I can. Let me go a little bit further. You know, that's one thing. I'm not going to sit here in my chair and go bend in that note because it's just, it's, it, 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 I, it just, mm. you got to have a lot of momentum to take something and, and bend it that far. The whole step bends are what you're looking for. And again, Use these two fingers together, like put a rubber band around them if you have to, duct tape them. And when you're learning, slide up. In case that person, uh, just, just, uh, chimed in you want to bend up to that area and just kind of and vibrato it's just leverage what you've got everybody works too hard work hard on dialing it in because if it's hard what you're doing uh then you haven't found that sweet spot it's just like when you're first learning how to play and you push down too hard and by the way even when i play my finger exercises I've got that pulse that you want to have the pulse going I work with people on their rhythm more than anything uh, you know some people they, they've got a lot of natural rhythm when I think that they're in touch with it you know um, it, it is something that that to a degree you can really learn mainly it's not about learning it's about connecting with it finding the pulse 
okay? So, uh, you can take just one area. And you can repeat that riff. So you can have one riff that you can play all over the neck of the guitar. Then put a groove to it. See, but I'm tapping my foot. Now, another thing when people learn how to play, they sit here and they play. You gotta move. one note and you really lock in on feel and you feel it from your head to toe now you've got something that's duplicatable then just find one more note <laughs> play it until you feel it and then you start getting a really a relationship with this guitar you know if you've only got five notes but you've got a whole drum set you know make make these things come to life because people when they're sitting and listening to you play they're not gonna like wow that's really you know technically he's very proficient that's great it really is but that's not gonna move people that's not gonna make their hair stand up on the back of their head uh, Pat Metheny oh my god I love Pat Metheny he's brilliant uh, jazz I don't listen to a lot of jazz I like uh, piano bass and drums because I'm a drummer wannabe. But I went and saw Pat Metheny. I mean, he was killing it. I mean, good Lord, he's all over the place. He broke into, you know, every guitar player in the world sitting there like this. He broke into this one little, maybe, you know, 12-bar section in his whole show. The place went nuts. Because you can feel that stuff. It's a conversation. It's something everybody gets, whether you like it or not. You know, it... So... Don't underestimate feel, okay? So if you only practice, 30 minutes would be great, but at least 20 minutes a day. Don't sit and play your guitar. Practice your guitar. And learn something until you got it in your DNA. Then throw that out the window, forget about it, and go play. Because it will show up. When you're playing, you don't want to think. All right? When you're practicing, you want to think, you want to play it perfect and work on one thing don't work on 15 different things and don't find yourself oh starting to play and oh diddling around and oh i'm on youtube and i know you know a tiny little bit of 400 songs you know you you really want to avoid that now you can go out and play you know do all that not when you're practicing you've got to get your technique you've got to get your foundation so in my blues grit series i've got 10 songs and they're templates a lot of them you know, Hey Joe, um, uh, Red House. Uh, you know, if you can play Red House, I mean, it's 12-bar blues. Uh, if you can play Red House, you can play anything that's 12-bar blues. It's like, what's the tempo? What's the feel? What's the problem you're singing about? You know, it's, it's blues. And you're going to put people to sleep playing blues if you don't make it interesting. And by putting punctuation in, you know, like if somebody comes in and says, Hi, Kelly, I really want you to get up and do something. Hey, get up and do something. Ah, okay. <laughs> what, do you, what do you want me to do? You want to do that to your audience, okay? So uh, so there's uh, Red House, Hey Joe, Crossroads. Uh, you know, those are, those are three songs that probably everybody's heard. Then I've got uh, a chord progression that uh, supports a song uh, called Tears Like Rain. <laughs> the 
dynamics. Okay, now that song promotes that flat tire thing. Like that. All right, so that up, down, up, down, up, down. So you got to mute it up and you're hitting the note on the down. Mute with your left hand, mute. And one size does not fit all. Watch how my hand is shifting. Okay, so. And then all that is supposed to. Okay, and like I'll get back on the pick when I hit it hard and I'll get up on the pick when I'm playing and I use the round part of my pick probably 80% of the time, 95% of the time probably and I use Dunlop, Dunlop 60 millimeters and they've got like that grit here and then they're smooth here and so they're a little bit more flexible here, a little bit tougher here. And so they just, they just melt into my, my finger. And some people say they don't want to play with the pick. Okay. I, you know, I, I can't make you, for the style that I do, you know, if somebody comes to learn from me, it's like, you got to play with the pick. If you want to not play with the pick, really work with a guitar teacher that doesn't play with the pick because I'm not good at playing a guitar without a pick. So, you know, a lot of what I'm teaching is technique. So if it feels foreign to have a pick in your hand, Carry it around with you and don't set it down. Just keep it with you every day. And if people say, what are you doing? It's like, carrying around my pick, <laughs> you know? So keep a pick in your hand, just like drummers, they'll twirl their sticks. You wanna get this. And you wanna be able to put it in between these fingers so you can, uh, middle finger. Anticipated note, these two. Eric Clapton's um, Unplugged record all those years ago when it came out and won all the Grammys. Watch that. Uh, when you see him playing on acoustic, I, some things really, I learned some things from that record or that live performance. You know, he's on an acoustic, so he's not going to be bending the strings like he normally would on electric. And so he would slide up a half step. Man, I use my middle finger a lot. When you're playing with your... Okay, so these are your paintbrushes. Are you putting eyelashes on what you're painting? Are you painting the side of a house? <laughs> you know, use the right tool for what it is that you're trying to do. Um, so it's 9.01. I'm going to just jam for 30 seconds, maybe a minute. And uh, let's see. Let me ask. Let's see. Pinch harmonics. I'll show, you, I'll show you those real quick. I did it earlier, but I'll show them to you again. And everything that I've gone over tonight, this is going to be on YouTube, so go back and watch it again. Um, uh, do you practice blues and all 12 keys are mainly stick to common? This is the common ones. You know, it. I'm always in, learn E and A. 
I mean, learn those like, you know, your name, where you came from, your email address, ENA, get those down. Then it's easy to, to, to put those anywhere because E, your root five, is right in the middle of the neck. And A, your root six, is right in the middle of the neck. So you're going to be using the real estate that's centrally located. And uh, you'll also have your open strings. You really have to learn how to deal with this open position. You know, everything that you do up here kind of gets tossed out the window when you go to play. I use my second, first, first and third, first and third, first and third. I always move up with my third. I always move up with my third. I always move up with my third, and I always move down with my first. You do not want your fingers saying, hmm, wonder how she's going to do it this time. Well, I don't know. Let's see. You, you don't have time for that. You, you won't have, it'll screw up your timing. So you really want to kind of become program. Well, you want to program yourself. You want this stuff in your DNA. I should be able to pull the chair out from under you, and you hit the ground in time. Because when people hear you play, if you're not making them do this, then, then you're dead in the water. You've got to make them feel, especially if it's blues, blues rock, anything like this. If you don't make them feel, then you know they're they're you're, they're not going to stay. Uh, whether it's a live performance or whether it's just listening to you play, pinch harmonics. You literally pinch the pick, and it's just like trying to rub something off of the of the wall. <clears throat> you're just gonna. Um, I'll, I'll get in the key of A. The best note to learn how to pull the sound out of is on your third string, seventh fret, in the key of A. See how I'm moving my hand up? There's a hot spot right there. Kind of hard to pull them up there. So where you are in this location is just as important as and then once you you get one then you can move it around because you kind of have the feel for it so I'll quickly uh, I, you know I think you'll be able to rewatch this when I sign off, um, I have a classroom on True Fire, and uh, I like to work people through my Blues Grit series and my uh, Focus on Power Trio series because the Power Trio, we get into the power chords, riff driven songs. Uh, there's four tunes in there uh, uh, adaptation of, of Purple Haze and an adaptation of uh, A Whole Lot of Love. Um, you know, it's the same kind of just kind of feel. And then there's two songs that I wrote. Uh, and one is... Same notes as... Everything is... I don't want to say... Well, everything's a ripoff. It, is that You Shook Me? Or is that rambling? Or is that before you accuse me? Or is that sleeping in the ground? You know, there's so much so that you wouldn't even know that that was the same notes. Uh, it's all five notes in the five note scale because that's all <laughs> there is. Um, so I took that song and then a song of mine, uh, uh, You Wanna Rock, which I'm not going to tune my, uh, actually, no, I'm not going to tune my D string down, uh, but it's got a drop D, and so if I was in the key of E, so it's just a three chord, um, but it's got a drop D, and uh, I love drop D, it's so much fun, drop your just your load E string down to a D 
and play for hours, you'll get lost. It's so much fun. Um, which, yeah, I do want to put it down. One other thing. Is it the same as... This guitar needs to be a part of your body. And sometimes when people are like, they're really starting to play. And it's like, okay, this week, work on making faces. Get in front of a mirror, play like you mean it. You know, if you were going to pick up the front end of a car, you wouldn't... Be... <clears throat> so, if you want me to feel something, well, make me feel it, okay? Play it like you mean it. That was that was one thing Albert Toby said. If you pull that... it's. I don't even like to use the word gun in this world today, but he said, if you pull that guitar out, it's like pulling out a gun. You better you better mean to use it. So, again, yes, Mr. King. So, and this is a bar chord because we've tuned that down. So now we got to come up two frets. focus on power trio that's got four songs but all the techniques i talk a lot about what is it to play in a three-piece band how important it is to create holes do not fill everything up it's like somebody that talks too much uh, which i've been accused of before uh, but not when i play so you want to make sure that what you're playing really counts and when i get crazy and do this now bop I'll drop the bottom out of it and I'll shut right up and people will be like whoa it's like that'll get their attention it's when you stop but you gotta be stopping from something so you gotta get that momentum going and then blues grit has 10 songs uh, several that you're very familiar with and then some blues templates that are like a ball of clay that you can take and if you know these then you can play anything in that same genre because I don't like to, to spoon feed people I, I will as much as I need to but I want to teach people how to play to, I want to teach people in a way that you're not going to need me there's six billion people on this planet there's plenty of people that want to play the guitar I don't need to hold on to students I'm always here you can come back I want to get people really knowing the fundamentals really knowing the neck of their guitar really having a feel so every note that you play is like whoa you know, if you've only got a half dozen licks, it's all you need. Play them really well, and then how you put them together. So, uh, let's see, I'm going to have to go soon because I have got, I do life coaching, and um, obviously I teach, and I teach through Skype. If you go to kellyritchie.com, you can find out everything in the world. I do I do a lot of stuff. Uh, I do school programs. Um, I've got a nonprofit music for change, writing for change. I'm a writing facilitator play, record. I've done 16 CDs. Um, and then I do like writing in yoga retreats. So yoga is a great thing. You want to stay physically fit. Okay. Oh, one last thing. Open and close your hand. Don't cheat in either direction. This is the best exercise you can do to build up hand strength in your left hand. And there's however long you can sit there and do it, I can do it longer. I've done this forever. You know, you can win money <laughs> doing this. Go up to Vegas guy and say, hey, I bet I can do this more times than you. They're like, uh-uh. It's like, oh yeah, I can. <laughs> you know, so anyway, um, uh, one YouTube teacher said to land on the root and then on the four and then on the five. Yes, yes, it is predictable. And you don't have to land on it. But it's like if you're telling a story, you don't want to lose the storyline. So if I'm playing like a... Oh, I'm in D. Sorry. I'm not going to be able to show you the...
Okay, let's see. Let me get to it. I'm playing it. Dun, 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 dun. Let me get to just 12 bar blues. That's where my baby stays. I mean, my four, my five. Five, walk down to my fourth. One. Four. One. There's your one. an A, my one. That's a one. What is it called? 12 bar blues? Yes. 12 bar blues is just a uh, ball of clay. And what problem are you going to sing about? What key are you going to sing it in? What tempo are you going to play it? That's 12 bar blues. Um, I'm a vegetarian, so I don't eat hamburgers, but it's kind of like a hamburger. What are you going to put on it? You know, uh, people are famous for their hamburgers. I would say people are famous for their tofu, but that doesn't tend to get people as excited. So see what all I did with that? Yes, my one or my one or my one or my one. And then my four. Back to my one. Where your one is, where your four in, where your five in is, what you're really doing is that's your center of gravity that you're launching from and landing back down to as you go on to the next chord, wiggle around and yeah, back. So, hopefully, this has been helpful. Let me get a couple of out of the way. Oh, I see a cuss word up there. Let's see, uh, what kind of pickups? Ah, these are Seymour Duncan Classic Stacks, uh, which means for those people that haven't been that long, if you see a Les Paul, it's got two of these next to each other, and they're humbuckers. That means that it bucks the hum or the eh. So, and they're fatter sounding. So on a Strat, used to be back in the old days, they would be like eh. If you put any overdrive, like turn on a distortion box or a fuzz tone, I mean, once you plow through it with a Marshall, you no longer hear the buzz. But in between songs, or if it got, you know, like you drop the bottom and it got quiet, the buzz would, would shine through uh, or ring through. So a stacked humbucker is when they put them on top of each other. You're only picking up the strings from one of them, but when they're stacked, they buck the hum. So they're quiet. Uh, so these are classic stacks by Seymour Duncan, and I've got them. Um, I have three strats. Uh, obviously, I've played this the most, but I had one uh, built, uh, an exact replica of this. They measured the neck and everything, because my neck's smaller here than it was 40 years ago when it was made. Uh, God, 40, three years ago. I didn't, I didn't have it quite that long, but it was brand new when I got it. So, uh, you know, it's kind of been worn down. But, and I use jumbo frets, so I have all of my guitars, those three strats, uh, set up the same. I've got a Les Paul that I really like, but I don't play it on stage. Every now and then I think I'm gonna, and I'll take it, but I don't. Uh, my, my body and how I play, uh, it, it, it's, I'm most familiar with the, the strat feel. Uh, but I enjoy playing a, a Les Paul, it changes my playing some. 
uh, let's see. And I use I use two um, Princeton Reverb amps in stereo for my solo shows or for smaller gigs. I use two um, deluxe reverb amps for uh, a band gig, uh, or you know if I'm going to be on a stage with drums and depending on how loud the drummer is. Uh, wear earplugs. I have tinnitus. Wear earplugs. Seriously, once you once your ears ring, they don't stop. So I'm really serious about that. I have uh, molded ear earplugs, uh, full shell, and then just the regular ones, depending on if it's a, a more quiet gig. So um, it doesn't make me totally crazy. I started really taking care of myself just in time, but they ring, and uh, that's a dangerous thing. Uh, so, oh yeah, uh, I, I used to use Tube Screamers forever. Now I have the Sunset Strymon Overdrive, which is really, really nice. Um, and I love delays. I like a ping pong delay. Let me turn this on. <laughs> I don't know if you get the benefit of that. We're going to get some digital noise. So, I don't know what that's all about. Ooh. So anyway, I'll turn that off. But uh, I do love delays. And, um... I like the kind of psychedelic sound. So, are Mexican strats better than U.S. strats? Probably not. But, you know, every now and then, you'll get a Mexican strat that's like, whoa, really, really nice. The U.S. strats are, um, they're supposed to be better. They're more expensive. Uh, you just got to pick up a guitar and play it and see what you think. You can have... I've had people hand me $5,000 guitars and it's like, I mean, I'd maybe love to go sell it and have the money, but I'm not going to play it. So it really depends on what feels good in your hands. Uh, I like vintage stuff, obviously, and it's, you know, a million dollars. So, um, you know, get something that that really fits your hands and, and don't buy something until you find it. And if you're uh, kind of new to playing get something that's not that expensive and learn how to play so you know what you're looking for before you sink a bunch of money into something and don't get a big fancy guitar so you can say you have one get a guitar and learn how to play it okay um which course would you say is essential for your students to use as a reference blues grit and uh focus on power trio um, I've got a Building a Strong Blues Foundation. I recorded about 150 videotapes on my own, uh, which, look those up in the classroom. There's a lot of information in there. I mean, they look kind of like this, although I'm sitting in different places, you know, with, and the sound. I mean, True Fire does the stellar job at making videos, and they make us teach in a very succinct way. I mean, they're great. Uh, the videos that I do myself, I go on and on and on like I am now. Uh, and the information I think is very valuable. But, um, you know, if you want something succinct uh, with just as much, you know, this is the nut of what I'm teaching, Blues Grit and Power Trio. If you want to really learn that Power Trio thing and really get a good foundation uh, of just playing the guitar, that's a great one to watch. There's four songs that just really get you playing a guitar. And then Blues Grit, it's just got a wider variety. And there is one song in Blues Grit that uses the major pentatonic. And it's a melodic song that's, that I wrote called The Longest Road, and it stays there. Uh, you can check out my CDs if you go to kellyritchie.com and you'll see how to spell it on here, K-E-L-L-Y-R-I-C-H-E-Y. You can link to my music, and uh, I have 16 CDs, but I think nine of them are there, and I've got several live CDs. Um, so, you know, check those out. And on my YouTube page, I've got like 150 videos. You know, I've probably got six or seven versions of Hey Joe. You know, watch 
you know, if you want to rip stuff off from me, go and watch it. And if you want to pick up a lesson, you know, make notes on, well, what did you do in this version four minutes and 23 seconds in? Well, I did it so I can tell you, <laughs> you know, I'm really good at teaching me. Uh, so, you know, that's one thing. Uh, so, you know, one-on-one -on -one Skype in the classroom, uh, get, you know, dial in the blues grit or focus on. And when you get stuck, you know, or, you know, a lot of people, you need a roadmap. You know, I would, I had a teacher. I've taken from a lot of different people. Uh, I needed a system. Um, now I practice 12 to 16 hours a day. And, uh, you know, it was before there was cable TV and video games. Thank God, you know, nothing against that stuff. But, you know, I didn't have anything else to do but sit and practice 12, 16 hours a day. I, this didn't leave my hands. I took it to school. They disconnected outlets. I took my aunt to school. So, uh, please don't tell my wife I don't need one of those expensive guitars. Okay, you really need an expensive guitar. Tell your wife it's the only way you're going to learn how to play. Uh, I'll send her an email for you. Uh, let's see. Okay, I think that's probably everything. I got to I gotta jump off here and coach. But I uh, really appreciate you all chiming in. I love doing these things. I love to teach. I've been teaching almost as long as I've been playing. And if there's anybody out there that really is a serious player, like for a career, you know, and you do not have to play the guitar and make money at it and have a career to enjoy the guitar. My God, sometimes I, you know, now that I'm off the road from that constant touring, I'm enjoying playing again. You know, it's, it's, it's great to do and be on stage and all that kind of stuff. I'm so glad I did it, but now I'm more picky about when I play. So you don't have to do that. Guitar is the best therapy you'll ever have. But if you're really serious about playing, teach. You know, I, when I first started, I stayed a step ahead of my students and I was dyslexic in school. So I was a wounded student in general. So I'm a very passionate teacher. I like to see the lights go off and uh, I have a ton of patience when it comes to teaching guitar. Not when I'm waiting on Starbucks and I got to stand in line too long. Okay, cool. So nice meeting you all. Check out my website. Hit me with an uh, email and let's see. Could I link my personal YouTube page? Yes, let me. I think it is. Let me send it here. Da -da -da -da. Dashboard. Okay. All right, here we go. Well, this is going to blast loud. Ooh, caught it just in time. All right, here you go. Here is my YouTube page. And I'll hit you with my... website and my contact is on there okay sweet all right thank you all so much i really appreciate it okay all right take care bye-bye